He's a world-renowned brain surgeon and a big philanthropist, which is why we interviewed him last year. But now he's also become a political lightning rod. So it seemed like a good time to revisit our Power Player of the Week. I think that it's the most appropriate venue to deal with what is ripping our nation apart and the fact that we are moving away from our values and principles. Ben Carson is talking about the speech, his remarks at the National Prayer Breakfast two weeks ago. With President well, Obama listening, Carson missed. diagnosed what's wrong what with the said. country, such as and, political uh, correctness. We've reached a point where people are afraid to actually talk about what they want to say because somebody might be offended. And the benefits of a flat tax. Now, some people say, they say, well, that's not fair because it doesn't hurt the guy who made $10 billion as much as the, the guy who made 10. Where does it say you have to hurt the guy? And why is that relevant at a prayer breakfast? Because at a prayer breakfast, we're talking about fairness. I think it's a perfect opportunity to talk about what is truly fair versus what is politically fair. The response has been electric. Two and a half million people have viewed Carson's speech online. A Wall Street Journal editorial proclaimed Ben Carson for president. This is the kind of thing the Republican Party should have been saying for the past four years. But liberals were upset, especially that Carson said it at the prayer breakfast. It is a, a way for people to commune with the God of their choice. And this guy turns it into a Republican talking point political session. Human potential is something that we don't really talk about a lot. We first sat down with Carson a year ago at Johns Hopkins Medical Center in Baltimore. He is legendary for taking on the toughest cases, the so-called hopeless patients. In some cases, it becomes clear that the only shot this person has is if you do something. Carson knows all about human potential because he's lived it. His mother got married at 13 and was illiterate, but he ended up going to Yale and becoming a brain surgeon. And since 1994, he and his wife Candy have run the Carson Scholars Fund, giving millions to help kids go to college. Why do you think your speech struck such a nerve? The average American wants a nation that is for of and by the people and not for of and by the government. As for the critics, they weren't listening. They were looking to criticize anything that they don't necessarily agree with. Carson doesn't think he'd be a good candidate for president. Too blunt, he says. Nor will he seek the office. But he doesn't rule it out. And he isn't afraid of any challenge. Do you have any qualms about the fact that, in a sense, you were lecturing the president of the United States while he just had to sit there? Well, you know, I serve God. And my purpose is to please him. And if God be for you, who can be against you? You may want to keep Ben Carson on your political radar. At age 61, he's retiring from surgery this June. So he's going to need something to do.